most wonderful time of the year and here at the GCU campus is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. The countdown is on for the holidays and while the students may be gone enjoying some time with the families, the Havocs will still be represented by some great fans tonight as the Lopes take the court tonight, hoping to uh, get a victory and put a big red bow on 2019 as they go up against the Panthers of Eastern Illinois. Kate Longworth welcoming you here to the Lopes pregame show coming at you on Fox 10 Extra. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope that uh, the presents are all wrapped, the food's already made, everything's ready for the holidays, right? No stress. Well, maybe that's not the case, but at least for tonight, you can sit back, relax, let us do the work. And I can't be on TV looking this festive all by myself. So with that, I welcome in our broadcasting partners. They'll have the call tonight. Barry Boutel, Scott Williams. Guys, I say it every night, but tonight especially, you're looking great. And as the Lopes uh, close out their 14-game non-conference schedule, what can we expect tonight? Yeah, that is, we are looking quite festive. I love the uh, tassel on the top of the hat. The presents <laughs> are you. under the tree. Yeah, the T-Rex taking the presents here. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I even made my half-court shot tonight, so this you is a lucky did. sweater. It, and there's Christmas something in the air here tonight. Hopefully it's a sign <laughs> of good things to come for GCU as they close out what Dan Marley said is the first of three seasons, that non-conference slate, and it's been a tough one. It has been a real tough non-conference schedule. Of course, that's the way Coach Marley likes it. He likes to play tough teams. I mean, the teams that they've lost to, two of them are still remaining undefeated. They go into tonight's action. Yep, San Diego State and Liberty, they go into the pit where the uh, Un University of New Mexico was 10 and two, and the uh, Lobos go up on top 91 to 71 in that game. It was a tough one. The, the uh, Lopes in the opening half did go toe to toe with them. Yeah, they were hitting for a little bit, but yeah. then a big run in the second half busted the game wide open. Bragg had a great game. He went for 20 uh, points and 14 rebounds. Lopes played well offensively. They shot 48%, team that normally only gives opponents about a 40 to 42% range but they just couldn't get it done on the defensive end. 55% shoot field goal shooting for the Lopes. A defensive minded coach Marley wasn't happy with the effort on the defensive end. One friendly face returning to the Lopes lineup after sitting out after transferring from St. John's. Mikey Dixon played a whopping 37 minutes and picked up 10 points. Yeah, we're really happy to have this guy oh, back. Man. He is a scorer. He slashes to the basket, gets inside the painted area. That's going to lead to some real high percentage shots. If somebody comes over to help, he's got good court vision and awareness. He'll be able to dish off to the bigs or find those shooters out on the perimeter. Yeah, you like those guys that slice in and go right to the hoop. Attack. That's where the money's at, right, for Mikey Dixon. Another guy that had a pretty good outing was Alessandro Labor. Had a double-double in the game and a career-high 11 rebounds. He was fantastic. 9 of 10 from the field. Did all of his damage in and around the basket. When he had an opportunity to go one-on-one, -on -one, he had showed a number of post moves, up and unders, finishes around the basket, a really good job. And he also, you know, you said the double-double was yep. fantastic. Did it on the defensive end as well. Yeah, 9 to 10 from the field. Now, Eastern Illinois, the Panthers, as Kate mentioned off the top of the show, they come in 7 and 4. They're riding a three-game winning streak. They're in the Ohio Valley Conference, and one of their standouts is George Dixon. Yeah, or they have been smashing opponents out those late. You mentioned that three-game winning streak. The last two coming in fashion of 21 and a half point average. And the big reason, George Dixon right here, kick and go. 13 and a half points. Shoots 60% from the field, and he will put his big body down on you on the offensive and defensive board. Averages nearly nine and a half Rodman's a game. 6'5, 230 on the scale. That's a, that's a big boy, George <laughs> Dixon, leading, leading the team in points and rebounding. That sets up the finale for non conference slate here for the Lopes before it all gets started at Bakersfield January 4th. Kate will send it back up to you. Well, guys, real quick, before that uh, conference action starts, sometimes there's little things a team can do, whether it's new energy out there or just tweaking a few things that can kind of get the snowball effect going in the right direction. Start that winning streak, if you will. And this is where I say roll tape because this might be what starts the Lopes on an incredible I think you're win streak. Right, I think you're right. right there, That's you, it, you got Scott, it. When he called glass. the lucky sweater. You know it came first time, baby. 
every game before every game. Scott court walks center. out center court, tries to hit that shot. Tonight you did it. And so, Scott, I just asked you, besides that, what are some of those besides things the that? Wolves can do? Well, I mean, that's going to start it, they obviously. Might. You can brag about yourself, but also what other little things can the Wolves do to make big things happen? Yeah, Coach Marley might want to get me one of those GCU uniforms the way that I'm shooting it from long distance. I'm uh, playing, but they got new boat. DNA. That's what I love, a little new DNA, some fresh blood, Mikey Dixon coming back in here, looking to provide a nice punch to that offensive um uh, line up. Oh, no doubt. And what you know, it's it's a great storyline for the Valley too, right? Taylor Hall joins the Coyotes. A little bit of enthusiasm for the hockey team, and then Bumgarner joining the uh, Diamondbacks. Right. So you, you get an infusion of new blood. It really rallies the clubhouse or the locker room, the dressing room. So we'll see if Mikey Dixon can can provide that same kind of spark. For hey, GCU. Well, I agree with you guys. I'm guessing all Dan Marley wants for Christmas is a W. Thank you guys so much. And Barry, get rid of that jacket. I want to see that Santa sweater on you by game time. Oh. All right. Thank you guys. And we still have plenty more to come here on the Lopes pregame show. When we come up, we're going to check in with one of the partners for GCU, the streets of New York, hungry for pizza, hungry for fun. We'll keep it locked in here on Fox 10 Extra. We'll be right back with much more. November is known for Thanksgiving and Black Friday sales. Sanderson Ford is changing Black Friday to Blue Friday to show our support for law enforcement. Purchase a new expedition with 0% financing for 72 months, plus $7,000 cash back. Save 20% off on EcoSport, Escape, Edge, Fusion, and Fiesta. Similar savings on over 500 trucks in stock. Plus, get a ring doorbell to help protect your family and our community. Don't miss the Blue Friday sales event on now at Sanderson Ford. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. One of my favorite Christmas memories is when I was three years old, my dad bought me a Little Tykes basketball hoop. And me and my brother had that basketball hoop in our room probably until I was like 10. And uh, it was all beat up, but that was like where the most crazy one-on-one -on -one games happened. And I definitely attribute a lot of my early basketball skills to that, that Little Tykes basketball hoop. So it's my best Christmas memory. The holiday season is upon us, and it's very exciting when you hear memories like that. It's making me feel good about my purchase for my kids when they were one years old, the Tykes basketball hoop. It never gets old. Santa Claus in attendance, lots of fans here tonight. And the Havocs, well, they may be home with their families, but we appreciate them tuning in here to Fox 10 Extra for the Lopes pregame show. Kate Longworth now aside from Rick Peterson, who is joining us from the streets of New York. Thank you so much for being out here today. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. And I know it's uh, not unusual at all to see streets of New York associated with the various sports teams here in the Valley, from uh, the Diamondbacks to the Coyotes, GCU as well. Why is it important for the company to team up with Valley Sports? Well, usually they're a great partnership. I mean, when you are partners with the Diamondbacks, the Suns, the Coyotes, uh, GCU, and I mean, those are great relationships. You GCU with Dan Marley as coach and with Jerry Colangelo, how do you find right. somebody better than the godfather of Arizona? <laughs> exactly. So. Godfather and pizza, it seems to go together. <laughs> and I know right now a lot of people can be a little bit stressed during the holiday season, wondering what meals they're going to prepare in the next couple of days, also wondering what gifts to give people. But Streets of New York can kind of take out the guesswork in that. You guys provide some great deals around the holidays. Well, we could take care of all that for you because we can not only cater the parties that you have at the house, or at the office but then we also sell gift cards so they're great presents for everybody so you could take care of your entire shopping list with this streets in new york gift card 
done and done. And there's some great incentives too if you visit the website. I know if you spend so much money, $100, you get $20 back. So not only do you provide for others, you provide for your family. That's a win-win. And then I know that it's very important for the streets of New York to give back to the community as well. And you've dedicated some of this holiday season to doing just that. Well, we try to do as much of that as possible because we realize that we've been here 43 years in Arizona. That's a long time. And only because of the people that come to our restaurants are we somewhat successful. So we also, at this time of the year, uh, work with Vitalant, the blood service, because this is the toughest time of the year to get blood. Everybody's so busy, everybody's rushing around. So this is the time to do it. And this is the time when we give away a free 10-inch pizza to everybody that donates blood during this time. So it always works out to be somewhere between eight to 10,000 pizzas every December. That's incredible, and it's a great gift to give this holiday season to save lives for others. And I know you re you referenced the longevity you had here in the Valley. When Lori Glazer started Streets of New York, it seems to be like it's more than just pizza. And we'll get to the other food you offer. But first and foremost, what does this company stand for? What is it all about? Because I know so many employees have been there with you guys throughout the decades. Well, we have close to 480 employees right now. And Lori Glazer, as you mentioned, the owner of Streets, She's been doing it for 43 years, so she's been there every single day, every day, making the dough, making the pizza, and her family's very involved in it as well. She has both of her daughters working there, her son-in-law working there, her son worked for us for a long time, so it's very much about the family with her, and that's why she's so giving and gives back to the community so much. And I know with the holidays, uh, families, myself included, you start to worry about the food prep that goes into it, but Streets of New York, Great pizza, but also more than that. I'm a fan because you have gluten-free options, but you also offer so much more than pizza. Can you just expand on what the menu entails? Well, we have pizza, pasta, subs, salads, wings. I mean, we have, we cover it all. And like I said, we've been doing it for 43 years and Lori puts so much passion into everything we do as far as the food. She will never, ever cut back on quality, never cut back on what we do for the guests. And it's all about the guests because that's who, make, who keeps you going. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rick, for joining us. It seems like you've got it all covered as well, talking about what you can do this holiday season to not only give back to the community, but also find your gifts for others and get some food to the table in between wrapping all those gifts, right? Well, thank you very much, and happy holidays to you, too. Thank you. You, too. Enjoy the game with your family, and when we come back, we will check in with a very important player here. That would be the head coach. He's an important part of this program, and when we get back, there he goes one-on-one -on -one with Coach Dan Marley to get tonight's game plan and much, much more. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show. We have tonight's action right here on Fox 10 Extra, and then we'll be back when the team comes back in 2020. I can't even believe that we are dealing with a new decade, and when that decade kicks off, well, the basketball team will be starting that whack play. First game, January 4th at Cal State Bakersfield. They will have a 14-day layoff, and then it is against Cal Baptist, and you'll be right back here with us on January 11th, followed by a road trip to Chicago State, Kansas City, before we join you on the 23rd. But for now, Barry Butel joins us with Dan Marley. Thanks, Kate. I'm joined by the head coach of the GCU Lopes, Dan Marley. The final non-conference matchup. You guys are coming off a, a tough one when you go into the pit. 
take on New Mexico. That is a tough place to play. You guys were kind of toe to toe in that opening half and it seemed like every three they threw up went into the bucket. Yeah, I thought we played uh, pretty well the first half. Uh, um, did some good things. Uh, and then the second half just kind of fell apart. You know, they threw a little press on us and we didn't handle it very well and uh, didn't get back on defense. And as you said, we gave up some threes and they got hot. So a disappointing way to finish. I thought we battled the first half, but uh, they're a really good team. The last three teams that we've played have been really good, and the pit's one of the best uh, atmospheres in all college basketball. Yeah, the 10, what, 10 and 2 coming in, and we've talked about Northern Iowa being 9 and 1 coming in here. I believe San Diego State and Liberty are still still un unbeaten. Yeah, I think there's four unbeaten teams, yeah. and Liberty and uh, and San Diego State are two of them. Yeah, and uh, so here we go. We are at the end of a non-conference play. That New Mexico game, though, Mikey Dixon came back. It was must have been nice to see that score on the floor. Yeah, you know, Mikey's worked hard. He's uh, been a year off without playing. Uh, he's been practicing really well, uh, can really score the basketball. I wasn't surprised that he struggled a little bit. I mean, for him to go out and uh, play 37 minutes in that altitude, uh, I was happy with how he played. Um, you know, now he's got a game under his belt. I, feel, I still think it's going to take a little bit of time for him to get back into game shape and to get used to competition and playing uh, uh you know, game type atmospheres, but he's going to be a really good player for us. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, nothing beats game conditioning, right? You can do everything on on the practice floor. Yeah, and he's going to be able to get another game under under his belt here uh, tonight, and then we'll have uh, we'll give the guys off a couple of days for Christmas, and then we'll come back and have two a day. So we'll be really to get uh, to start grinding here for the conference season. Yeah, Mikey had 10 points and some 37 minutes on the floor at the pit. Now, JJ Rhymes goes uh, down with the injury, the hip injury, so that's a tough blow once again on a, a what has been kind of a tumultuous season. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, it just keeps on raining. Uh, you know, JJ had some problems with his hip and uh, decided to, to shut it down and to go ahead and get the surgery. So, uh, you know, wish him nothing but the, the best and success there. But, uh, you know, we'll miss him again. It's another body that we had coming off the bench. A guy could rebound and score for us in the low post. So, uh, we'll just have to keep moving forward. Another uh, player that fans were kind of anticipating coming back and awaiting that arrival was Oscar Freyer. They Final grades for the semester reported uh, are going to be reported tomorrow, but uh, that might be a blow as well for the team. Yeah, right now it doesn't look good. It doesn't look like Oscar's going to be eligible to play. So at, at this at this point, unless something drastic happens, he'll probably miss his whole senior year. So uh, very disappointed in Oscar. Um, love the kid. He's been here. Uh, you know, brought him as a freshman. He started most of his games here. Has been an integral part. We could really use him this year, but. Uh, you got to take care of business, and Oscar didn't. Yeah, they talk about the three C's, right? The challenges, the consequences, and the choices. And uh, you know, you, you got to overcome. Well, some you got to be a student athlete, and uh, uh, Oscar uh, just didn't take care of business in the classroom. And as you said, uh, his his actions has consequences, and unfortunately, not only it hurts him, but it hurts everybody else also. One guy that's stepping up, and uh, you'll lean on him pretty heavily, is Alessandro Labor had double, another double double at the pit, 18 points, 11 rebounds. Yeah, uh, you know, Ali's been really good uh, offensively. We have to continue to throw him the ball and, and go th our offense through him. Uh, it's going to be a big challenge because he's the focal point of every uh, team when they come in here or we play that they're going to try to shut him down. But he's done a really good job. So uh, we'll continue to feed the big fella um, and try to work through him in the post. Uh, he's got to continue to do a better job defensively, not only staying out of foul trouble, but do a better job of guarding his man. But he can definitely score, and we're going to lean heavily on him. Is that a thin line, Dan, when you, you know you need him on the floor? So, you know, hey, don't take some chances, but don't yeah, take I don't, too many. You know, I, don't, I don't tell him that. I just okay. say he can't pick up the stupid fouls, the dumb right. ones. But he's still got to play aggressive down there and be able to guard his guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can't be a liability on defense. So it's, a tough, it's, it's tough for him because... Uh, it's physical down there, and he, he has it in the back of his mind that he has to stay on the floor. But, you know, you get five fouls. Yeah. So he's got to be able to use them wisely, but just do a good job of moving his feet and, and being in the right position. Eastern Illinois comes in there riding a three-game winning streak, Ohio Valley Conference uh, team, and uh, their point differential uh, is about plus 16. Uh, they, they're hitting close to 80. Yeah, I mean, they, they're, they're a really good team. I'm not going to, you know, but they've played a couple of teams that they've blown out that sure. aren't great competition. But they're... I, I told our guys they're like a whack team. They're they're really tough. They're undersized. They play extremely hard. So again, this is going to be a good test. They're playing extremely well right now. But this is the kind of team that we're going to see during the whack season. So uh, I'm anxious. Uh, we've we've had some really good practice. I've said this before on the show before games that I'm anxious to see how our guys are going to play. And we just got to keep 
got to keep grinding. Uh, I thought our offense at New Mexico was a lot better. Uh, we moved the basketball. We shot 48 percent. Concerned about our defense. We got to find a way to start stopping people and make that a priority. Well, this is the the first season of three, right? That you've talked about. The non-conference season comes to a close, and it gets started uh, at Bakersfield in earnest on January 4th. Yeah, we got to really continue uh, and, and find a way to win this game. I told our guys that this is just uh, any way possible. Win a game, uh, go out on a high note. Uh, going to Christmas break with a little bit of momentum and feeling good about ourselves. And then when we come back, we're really going to get back uh, to working and we'll have the team. You know, it's been, what, this is our 12th game or whatever, and we didn't really know who was going to be on our team. Well, now we know who is on our team. So when we come back from the break, we're really going to focus in on what we have to do, who we have, and find a way to have a great whack season. All right, good luck tonight, Coach. All right, thank you. Head Coach Dan Marley, Kate, we'll send it back upstairs to you. All right, thank you so much, Barry. And from Coach Dan Marley to the women's side, we're going to check in with Coach Nicole Powell to get the pulse on the Lopes women basketball team when we come back with more Lopes pregame show coming at you from the CU Arena. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. MLS number 410376. <laughs> The holiday season is upon us as the GCU men's basketball team closes out its non-conference schedule. We're counting down the tip off right behind us here at GCU Arena. But before that, we're going to check in with the women's side of things when it comes to basketball. So we're joined now by head coach Nicole Powell and the women's team coming off some great victories this past week, especially that game Thursday following the UNLV win. Thursday, go head to head with UC Santa Barbara. Take it down to the final second. Team comes up big. Take me through those two games and how those victories have been helping the squad and what was the key to success? Sure. Uh, first of all, I'm just really proud of my team. We are so young. We are we are starting freshmen, sophomore, sophomores, and at the point guard position, which is really a challenge. And so uh, we've got great enthusiasm, great talent, but we don't have the experience built in. And so each game we've been improving. It's been learning moments and just time to grow. And we're starting to see the fruit of that growth a little bit. We're still, of course, not playing to where we want to be by the end of the year. But my team's grown each week, and I'm really proud of how the team is committed to that. Yeah, and when you have a game like Thursday against UC Santa Barbara, how can that just help in that growth and kind of propel the momentum here when you guys come down to the final second and Deja Daniel goes in and gets that winning shot with point three on the clock? You know what it is? It's resilience. And so earlier in the season, we were losing those two-point games. We weren't finishing out tough situations. So to start the fourth quarter down by nine, you know, UC Santa Barbara guard made a great play. We kept our boys 3.2 seconds, executed a, a, tight, a sideline out of bounds, end of game finish, um, just shows the resilience. The boys that were finally starting to, to get and understand what it takes to finish games with a win. And speaking of that poise, you guys, your shot selection and what you guys have been able to accomplish, especially beyond the arc, establishing yourselves as one of the best three-point shooting teams. What has led to that success? You know, part of it is we love shooters. So, so we're, we're going to recruit shooters. Um, but the second side of that is just working hard. You know, I really, truly believe any player who works on their craft, works on their shot, can become a good shooter. It's been our focus since the summer. Our kids coming in have known that's what we want to be able to do. We want combo guards who can handle, who can uh, be playmakers, and who can knock it down. And so I'm really uh, impressed with all of our guards shooting the ball well. And you reference 
difference that you let's just talk a little bit about your freshman point guard in Jada Holland. What is it about her that makes her so strong out on the court? Yeah, you say her name and it brings a smile to my face. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're so thankful to have her. Um, what I think makes her special is her mindset. You know, she's got great poise and it takes a lot. And it's a gift and it's a talent to be able to take coaching take concepts on the fly. I mean, she's only, you know, nine games into her entire college career. Right. Came out of high school as truly a pass-first point guard on a talented team that's now learning how to put playmaking and scoring together. Um, but she's able to take our concepts in coaching and apply, apply them quickly. You know, she's able to make adjustments in game. And right. that takes a strong mental fortitude, and I think that's her greatest asset. Yeah, maturity beyond her years. But then when you look out at your squad, too, it seems like you have the leadership, maybe by, you know, exciting the team, too, but also by example. And I'm talking about Deja. What does she do to go out there? I mean, her numbers look impressive, almost a double-double every game. But when I have seen her play live in action, she just kind of brings that spirit, I think, the looks exemplify. She does. Another young woman that just uh, brings a huge smile to my face. Um, I call her warrior. She, she is our warrior, and, and when you see her play in person, you do see that spirit, that grit, how tough she is, um, and her journey um, to come here to, from Trinity Valley Junior College. The growth that she has made is tremendous. I mean, she's one of the most special kids I've ever coached in my entire career. Uh, we're blessed and lucky to have her. And uh, I'm excited for her to finish out her senior year really strong. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Nicole Pell. And uh, you guys will be finishing off non-conference play this week with the game tomorrow. And then a tilt against Cal on Sunday. Then you start WAC play. So enjoy all. Enjoy the holiday season. And this baby may be having a relaxing time. But we're going to get you excited for what's ahead. We're talking Christmas movies when we come back here on Fox 10 Extra. Courtney. And I'm earning a master's online at GCU in Christian ministry. My husband is in the military, so we move a lot. I really wanted a school that would support me no matter where I lived, and GCU was a great fit for that because although it's a rigorous program, I really enjoy that I get to do it on my time. Sometimes that's at a coffee shop, sometimes it's in my office. Faith is a big part of my life. I play violin in my church, and I get to express my gifts and worship God. I pray continually, and I just really try to seek God. I really wanted to go to a school that could highlight that and worship God freely, and GCU definitely gave me the platform to do that. Being an online learner at GCU, I've really made a personal investment in my own life that has given me such confidence to go into my field, not only to become an expert, but be a change agent for the world. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. The cheer team literally cheering you into the holiday season. And with that, we bring on the favorite Christmas movie or TV shows of the Lopes, starting with Dan Marley and It's a Wonderful Life. Mikey Dixon checking in with the Grinch, Isaiah Brown, Carlos Johnson, and Laver, all fans of the Home Alone franchise, one, two, and three. I'm with Spry, I'm all about Elf. And uh, senior managers also checking in with us. Noah says Elf, Travis Allen with Polar Express. And who doesn't love this time of the year? Whether you're spending evenings in front of uh, the TV watching uh, holiday movies, that's late night because right now you're watching college basketball or whatever it is that makes you happy during the holiday season. We're glad to be spending this time with you as we recap what the Lopes have been able to do this past decade. That's right, they're playing in their final game of the decade. So coming up in today's game, we're going to reveal the top five moments in Lopes basketball. So tweet at me at Kate Longworth or find me on Instagram, Kate Longworth TV, and let me know your favorite Lopes basketball moment. We'll see you with tip off right after this.
from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes close out non-conference play by hosting the Panthers from Eastern Illinois University. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Murray Patel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, the Lopes closing out non-conference play against the Panthers from Eastern Illinois after a tough 20-point loss at New Mexico. But what was nice about it was the return of Mikey Dixon. It's nice to have Mikey Dixon out on the floor. This is a guy that can be a lot of different things for the Lopes. He can shoot the ball, he can slash to the basket, he can facilitate the offense, he can put this penetration. He opens up opportunities to drive for himself, but also to be able to dish to the bigs down low and find shooters out on the perimeter. There you see it, 37 minutes, 10 points, one rebound in that first game in a GCU uniform. Eastern Illinois comes in, a record of seven and four. They've won three straight. They're led by the big man, 6'5", 230, George Dixon. Yeah, he's a big man inside, can really score the basketball, gets on the glass for nearly 10 a game. Lopes got to put a body on him because he does a lot of his damage on the offensive boards. Well, it's time to get this thing started. Let's send it down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Western Athletic Conference and Grand Canyon University, thank you for your cooperation. gentlemen and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU arena for tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Panthers of Eastern Illinois University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Tonight's game is sponsored by Streets of New York for pizza, pasta, and subs. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Kendall Roberts, a junior majoring in elementary education and a third year member of the GCU cheerleaders. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you blessed us with. Thank you for giving everyone here the opportunity to attend tonight's basketball game. I pray that you put your hand of protection over all of the athletes, all of the coaches, and all of the spectators. Most of all, I pray that you help us to glorify you in all that we do. It's in your heavenly name that I pray. Amen. Thank you, Kendall. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with a presentation of the national anthem. Tonight, the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by the Tolleson High School Choir under the direction of Samantha Patton. Thank you, Tolleson High School Choir.
Eastern Illinois University comes in with a record of seven and four. Their head coach is Joe Spoonhauer in his eighth season. Former head coach at Moberly Community College, Texas, San Antonio, Missouri, and UNLV under his late father, Charlie Spoonhauer. Here's a starting five brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Max Smith, Marvin Johnson, Josiah Wallace, Jaqualis Matlock, and George Dixon. Yeah, we're going to keep an eye on Matlock. 6'5", senior, knows how to play the game. Had a season-high 14 points and 8 boards in their last game against Western Illinois. Assistant coaches are Rand Chapel, Justin Brown, and Matt Bringman for the Ohio Valley Conference Panthers from Eastern Illinois University. Time now to introduce you to GCU. Dan Marley in his seventh season, 127 and 81. At the helm, here is Coach Marley's starting five, brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Isaiah Brown, Mikey Dixon, Javon Blackshear Jr., Carlos Johnson, and Alessandro Labor. Yeah, all eyes on CJ tonight. Coming up, a great game against the Lobos, where he had 23 points on 8 of 14 shooting. Knock two down from behind the three-point line. Will Johnson be in attack mode tonight again, or will he settle for the outside J? Associate head coach Marvin Menzies, the assistant coaches Chris Crevelone and Isaac Jew, director of basketball operations Dylan Hidalgo, special assistant to the head coach Johnny Hill, video coordinator is Matt Lopez, director of sports medicine Jordy Hackett, and director of sports performance is Gabe Borland. Looks closing out non-conference play before traveling to Bakersfield to take on the Roadrunners January 4th in Western Athletic Conference play. Time now for the keys to the game brought to you by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Yeah, these keys are our top holiday songs here on the broadcast team. Mine came in at number 10, the little drummer boy. Lopesy to find a rhythm on offense. They shot 48% at New Mexico, which is really good because New Mexico only allows 42% a game must continue that trend. Yours, Barry, came in at number seven, Silent Ooh, Night. Nice. No silence you. tonight. Talk on defense. Coach Marley has been stressing that in practice. Communication so there's no breakdowns. Do not allow 55% shooting for the Panthers like they did for the Lobos at New Mexico. And then Kate's number one holiday song came in at number one, oh. All I Want for Christmas by Mariah Carey. Oh. All the love want for Christmas is a win. In this ugly three-game winning streak, close out this chapter on a rough non-conference schedule, move into the new year on a high note. Looks really good in their final non-conference games, by the way. Four and one over the last five years in that last game before the start of conference schedule. You're looking at Mikey Dixon, the transfer from St. John's. Brett Moe, Mark Mosley, Beasley rather, and Randy Richardson are the officials here at GCU Arena in Phoenix. Bird's eye view of opening tip. The fans from GCU remain on their feet till the opening bucket for GCU in control. Eastern Illinois. Great holiday crowd in attendance here. Wallace brings it out front. Johnson plays catch there with Dixon. Barely in score. Matlock back out front. Smith, long distance, good. Oh, good execution of the offense by the Panthers. Worked the ball side to side, got a clean look right in front of the hoop. 30 of 75 from the arc now for Max Smith, their leading three-point shooter. Blackshear moves around Johnson. Down low, labor off the glass and in. Lopes fans can take a seat. I'll tell you what, Javon Blackshear had a lot of pressure out there from the basket. He handled it really well, was able to get a beat, a step rather on his defender, and then when the Defense came to help. He fires a strike over to his big man. From the corner, good. Oh, wow. Hot from behind the arc. Lopes saw a lot of that uh, out in New Mexico. 
Don't want that trend to continue. Lobos, Lobos shot 14 to 26 from behind the arc, and they're not a great uh, three-point shooting team, so Lopes got to find these shooters, close out on them, and run them off of that three-point line. Dixon, Labor, hands it off. Johnson looks for three. Good! Oh, nice to see that early. Yeah, Carlos Johnson, and two for four from behind the arc. His last ball came, first time he touches it, he got those Nikes squared to the hoop and knocked down the long ball. Johnson looking to feed Dixon down low. Out, low ball. Nice job there, overplay in that passing angle. Made it real tough to find that cutter. The Panthers throw it out of bounds. Saw Coach Spoonhauer. 14 and 18 a season ago in the Ohio Valley Conference, 7 and 11 in the conference. I think he had like a, a funny nickname, like Teaspoon or something like that growing up. <laughs> he the coach's son. It's easy, right? That's a, that's the, yeah, that, he's probably coming with like four or five of those real yeah. quick. Labor trying to back in, goes right hand and it got a little help. Climbed up over the top. Yeah, Labor showing some real good footwork this year down on that low block. Takes his time, great patience. His left shoulder turn was strong, dominant move, his right hand hook. Dixon, Johnson's trying to guard that 6'5", 230, does a good job there. Oh, somehow. Did you see that move? <laughs> yeah. Blackshear, like, Blackshear? jumped in the air, was able like to find Matrix. his buddy. <laughs> that was good. Johnson. Oh, we're feeling it. Are we feeling it? He's feeling it. Carlos Johnson continuing those good vibes. We highlighted him in that opening starting lineup because he was coming off such a good game. It seemed like last year his better games came to the second half of the season. Will that trend continue? They don't run. We're feeling that magic when you hit that. Center court shot in the pregame. Wow, all five trying to get to that glass. That was on the whiteboard when we were going through our, our pregame meeting. We could see the coaches had put that on the whiteboard. Five on the glass. Driving Johnson. Johnson peels back out. Wallace looks to his left, near side. Max Smith. Bounce pass into Dixon, drives baseline. Carlos got a hand on it. Enough to disrupt that shot. Yeah, I think Dixon got away with the walk, so they let the Carlos get away with a little bump. Uh, little carry there by Blackshear. Look at this. Let's go back to that three here by Carlos Johnson. I mean, you love that one right there. Dribble drive hard at the defender, and as he's going backwards, you snap back with that basketball, get yourself back on balance, fire up the long ball before the defense has a chance to recover. Skipper Brown in for Eastern Illinois. Wallace. Skipper Brown looked to feed it in. Went out. Brown. Good D there. Yeah, Panthers really trying to penetrate the Lopes defense with the pass, but Lopes doing a good job playing them tight down there, not letting anything easy inside. Out to Mikey Dixon. Top of the arc, drives, cuts in. Doesn't go. A nice slashing move yeah. by Dixon. A $10 move with a 10 cent finish. He's got to concentrate and put that home. What a push off there. Is that little uh, Javon Blackshear giving up his body down there on the defensive transition? Panthers quick to get the ball to the other end after the missed shot, but. Javon Blackshear putting his chest right in front of that driver. Gets the charging call. Three turnovers in a row now for the Panthers. In the front court, Blackshear. Bounce pass, Johnson. Turns. Goes around into Labor. Labor back to the bucket. Looking to turn. Big right hand. Oh, doesn't go. But look who's there. Mikey Dixon. Loose ball underneath. It's going to bring it out. Long distance shot. Oh, that's off the mark. Johnson tried to grab it. Pulled down by Eastern Illinois. Smith. Up for Smith. Long distance again from Max Smith as Sharif Smith is in the game. I tell you what, they, they are really looking at that. Shoot over the top of that Lopes defense. Not able to get anything inside with the dribble drive or the pass. They're just looking for that long ball to pay some dividends for them. Lopes started 4 of 4 since. They're 0 for 4. Looking to 
reconnect. Long distance, good for Carlos Johnson! Carlos Johnson, three for three from three point land to start this basketball game. Can't ask for a better start for Los. I don't mind him shooting from back there. Nah, if you make it him like that, <laughs> let, him, let him continue to fire him. You know, Coach Marley says, hey, I like him when he's driving, but I don't want to tell him not to shoot from that side when he's open. Well, he's open, and he's making him go down. And Dixon. Foul. Dixon's just a big dude. He got some long, wide body shoulders down there. Holds off the defender, gets the foul going to the basket. Looks off to a great start. My motivation of becoming a doctoral learner was so I could immediately start using the information that I was learning in the courses as a tennis coach here for my student athletes. I think that it set a good example for those around me to know that things can be accomplished. My name is Greg Prudholm and I just defended my dissertation to earn a degree in performance psychology. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. Time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. TCU men's basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Curry Butel, Scott Williams, and the third member of our team, we send it to Kate Longworth. Well, the long-awaited wait is over. Christmas comes early for GCU fans as Mikey Dixon makes his first start here at GCU Arena in the Lopes uniform. And after his first official game on Tuesday at New Mexico, Coach Marley commended him for his great poise. Marley saying he's very optimistic about what's in store for this team and what Mikey Dixon can bring saying he's just uh, a very smart player and can really shoot it. And guys, we've been talking about just how new energy can really fuel a team. Mikey Dixon really has a knowledge for the game, and now we get to see how it plays out tonight and throughout WAC play. Yeah, we saw that already, right, Scott? I mean, driving it to the hoop. Yeah, I mean... They free up Carlos a little bit. Yeah, it, it's going to do a number of good things for this basketball team. Just any time you penetrate that basketball below that free throw line, getting those letters, it opens up the outside shot. It also creates an opportunity where they have to provide help defense from one of the bigs. You can shovel the ball underneath you one of your bigs, and then they'll get an easy opportunity to score a field goal, a high percentage shot, or get fouled in the recovery process and get to the free throw line. Lorenzo Jenkins in the game. Blackshear goes far side. Brown. Brown back to Blackshear. Moves inside now. Top of the key. Jenkins. Oh, a little bit of hop there. And a little bunny hop. You know, Eastern Illinois came out of that timeout in the zone defense. And I'm not sure if the play that Marley drew up at during the timeout was to go against a man to man. Looks like the Lopes were caught a little off guard. Weren't sure exactly how to penetrate against that zone. Skipper Brown. Eyed by Jenkins. Back up. Up top. Matlock, near side. Max Smith, another long distance shot off the glass. Rebound picked up by Labor up to Blackshear. Nice challenge on that three point attempt by the Lopes. Blackshear, back out. Labor, Mikey Dixon. Jenkins on the near side, back to Labor. Got a little bit of time for three. Bam! Oh, it's right in threes. It's so sweet to see. Oh, the Lopes are really hot from behind that arc. Four for five to start the game now from behind the arc. Three by Carlos and one there, big one by Labor. Wallace back up, up top. They're looking for some money there for Eastern Illinois. Rebound and a foul is committed. As Jordan Skipper Brown is fouled, he's 6'6", 230. Yeah, they, they got some big body players down there. That 6'5", to 6'6", range. Got Matt Locke and Dixon. Skipper Brown out there, there on the offensive glass. And the Lopes, I was just going to say, we've done such a good job controlling their defensive boards. All five boxing out, putting the body on those blue jerseys. But 
Skipper Bowles just used those wide shoulders there. Got right in front of the bucket. Five point lead. Back to four. Full court Soft. press here. Yeah. Sharif Smith was on Blackshear. Falls back into a. It looks like they fall back into a little 1 2 2 zone defense. Did you see that recently from uh, one of the opponents? Maybe they're looking at some tape. Oh! Get Carlos Johnson. I'm, I'm sorry, man. He, he must have been fueled off of what you did in the pregame. Carlos he Johnson is money. on fire from behind the arc. <laughs> and then the great thing about that now, now they're going to start coming out and challenging that three. And what he does best is put the ball on the floor, put his head down, and go to the bucket. It's really going to open up the driving lanes for him. Marvin Johnson. Getting a little fancy with the dribble. Back out on top. Oh. I don't think that hit anything. Now the close the door. Let him know. <laughs> a little grafty in here. Well, you know, they did a little over dribbling that time. Penetration is great, but it was almost kind of like they was you know, three or four dribbles too many down there in that painted area. It threw out the entire rhythm of the offense. You had a bunch of guys standing around watching. Nearly lost the ball. When he finally did get the ball, I think he got a little further out than he would have liked behind that three-point arc. Last year to Labor. Johnson cuts in, weaves around a floater. Doesn't go. Tap back, doesn't go. Labor puts a hand in there, can't get in. Well, that's what I was talking about, though. Now they're coming out on number 23 hard. And every time he was able to put the ball on the floor, he got right to the front of the rim, just couldn't get it to go. Oh, look at Blackshear. Picked his pocket. That kid's dynamite. Oh, I, I just good. like all the things that he does. Look at him going to the hole look now. Look at him cut in. Oh, we got that swatted away. Jenkins puts it back. Good for Renzo! 